won the first place prize, and he is just an excellent speaker. You're going to enjoy hearing from him. His name is Liam O'Connor, and he's from the Delaware Society en route to Princeton. Liam. The name's O'Connor, Liam O'Connor. You'll get that in a minute why I said it. Before I speak to you tonight, I first have to give a few people some gratitude for all the support that they gave me. I have to thank Mr. McKinley for, of course, running the program. I have to thank the President General and the Chairman. I have to thank Mr. Brenner for bringing me out here today. And I have to thank my own mom, of course, for listening to my speech so many times. I also have to thank Scouting for bringing me up here as well. My first camp out in Boy Scouts was to Valley Forge, and let me tell you, it was just as cold as the real thing. <laughs> How I stayed in Scouting after that, I don't know. Out of the 18 contestants last night, four of them were Eagle Scouts, and out of the final six, two of them were Eagle Scouts, and of course, the final one being me. And then, as you can see, out of the five winners up here on the stage, three are Eagle Scouts. It was in this environment that I learned how to speak, so imagine having 620 kids all in an amphitheater, ages 13 through 20, they all want to go out, climb a rock wall, go shoot some guns, but instead they're sitting here listening to an election speech, and now you've got to figure out a way to get them motivated for you. That is the type of environment that I learned how to speak. And I wasn't concerned about the awards coming in, I just wanted to get my message out. Now, James Bond gets all the flair and attention for spies, but I wanted to bring a different perspective to show you that there's an American side to this that is just as awesome, and it goes all the way back to our nation's founding. The American spy winning the war from the shadows. In the middle of a dark night, a lone rowboat crosses the Long Island Sound. The date is September 12, 1776. A few weeks prior, the British Army under the command of General William Howe had successfully invaded Long Island. George Washington, in defeat, retreated to Manhattan. He was desperate to gain any bit of intelligence on the British Army's next plan of attack. One young man in this boat by the name of Nathan Hale had volunteered to travel behind enemy lines as a spy. As the boat landed, Hale was dressed in civilian clothing so that he could operate under the guise of a schoolteacher. In the following days, he began to collect intelligence. However, his service was cut short. Stories vary as to how his identity was discovered, but it is known that Hale was marched to the gallows on September 22, 1776. Before he was hanged, he uttered the now famous line, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. In the aftermath of this espionage failure, the Continental Army improved its intelligence capabilities so as to better protect its spies and more effectively deliver sensitive information. A number of these developments continued to have an impact on American spying practices to the present day. Over the course of the next few years, George Washington increased the number of people spying for the Army. His greatest espionage achievement was the establishment of the Culper Ring, an elaborate military spy organization operating in New York City during British occupation. Its goal was to inform Washington of British troop movements in that region. To maintain secrecy, important names were given coded numbers. New York, for example, was 727, while Washington was 711. The most successful spy in the ring was Agent 723, better known as Robert Townsend. During his service, Townsend uncovered a British plot to flood the American economy with counterfeit dollars and warned the army of a high-ranking spy in its midst, later determined to be Benedict Arnold. Another major feat involved telling Washington of an impending British attack upon the French fleet landing in Rhode Island. Because of this information, Washington maneuvered his army as to trick the British into believing he would invade New York City, thus thwarting the British plan. Townsend did all of this without compromising his own identity. In fact, historians did not discover Agent 723's real name 
until 1930. One reason that American espionage was so effective was its vigorous utilization of cutting edge tactics. The Revolutionary War was one of the first conflicts to use dead drops, secret containers left behind by spies to pass along information. Charles Dumas, a Dutch agent for the Americans in Europe, created the world's first diplomatic cipher to communicate with Benjamin Franklin and the Continental Congress. Other agents, most notably in the Culper Ring, published coded messages overtly in public newspapers. Still, diplomat Silas Dean invented a heat-developing invisible ink. Later, this was modified so that a sender used one chemical to write a message invisibly, while a receiver used a second chemical to reveal it. This was called a sympathetic stain. Washington instructed his spies to, quote, write a letter in the Tory style with some mixture of family matters, and between the lines communicate with the stain the intended intelligence. Occasionally, the British captured some of these letters and discovered the information. To counter that, Washington allowed the British to capture couriers with false documents. This type of deception tricked British generals on multiple occasions, including General Cornwallis before the Battle of Yorktown. Espionage continued to have an integral role in American military operations following the Revolutionary War. Over 150 years later, the United States was again at odds with another world power, the Soviet Union. During the Cold War, American agents used many of the same espionage methods developed during the Revolution, including ciphers, dead drops, code names, and secret inks. When American spy Francis Gary Powers was captured behind enemy lines, rather than executing him as the British had done with Nathan Hale, the Soviets participated in a spy exchange with the US, another practice that was pioneered in the Revolutionary War. Today, America is losing ground in the world of intelligence. Our country's enemies are not always apparent. Hackers such as Julian Assange reveal secret diplomatic knowledge. Turncoats like Edward Snowden expose classified military documents. And terrorist groups evade the central intelligence agencies' information collecting technologies. Intelligence is crucial in the war on terror. If America is to remain a dominant power in the modern world, it must learn a lesson from George Washington himself and strengthen its foreign intelligence operations. Although spies do not receive the same credit as soldiers in affecting the outcome of the Revolutionary War, or any American war for that matter, their toil, courage, and patriotism were just as important. Spies, they fought the wars from the shadows. Thank you.